It's July the 25th, 1986. I'm Mike Benedetti. This is Five Away to Show About Worcester. Tonight we're on Worcester Common and we're, people are going to watch Back to the Future. They're very excited. Here's Brendan Mellican on the show. Hi, Brendan. How are you, sir? What? How are you exactly? What? <laughs> This guy. Also on the show today, Gabe. How you doing? Also Nicole Apostola. Also many of the people from the city of Worcester out here tonight. You wanna go over that way so we might be able to hear something? I was thinking over there we might be able to hear something. I think we need to go perpendicular to the stage. Behind the truck. Behind the truck, maybe we can be quiet how behind the truck. We thank you all for coming. This, how is this food, a food truck on the common? Parks Parks Department says it's okay. I'm gonna take it this food truck. This is inappropriate. Oh, Robin. There's a Call restaurant Robin right over there. You tell him this is you don't approve. <laughs> how can this, how can this be happening without everything going wrong? Without right? cri crimes being committed? Without pit bulls eating children? This is. Well, you know why? No beer. There's no beer. That's not true. I walked by at least four dozen people drinking over in the corner over there. That. Oh, they don't. But they've been here since about eight o'clock this morning. They've been here since. Eight, the manager nine actually drives them in in the morning. I smell a lot less weed walking around here this evening than I normally do on the That's common. That's my favorite part of the common nowadays, <laughs> that there is so much weed being smoked on the common and nobody even seems to care. This is our it's little like, Amsterdam. Yeah. Well, it's, it is, it's nice, though, because nothing has changed, right? Like, people are smoking weed on the common, nobody's getting stabbed, nobody's beating the tar out of each other. People are actually much more relaxed. They're just mellowing. Because they're smoking weed on the common. It's true. It's true. Maybe just an air freshener. There's still some tar beatings every once in a while. What's that? There's still be some beating the tar out of people. Still and, happens. Um, but is it related to the smoking of weed or is it independent of the smoking of weed? I've actually never seen anybody who smoked smoke weed and then start a fight. I don't fight. think it's related to yeah. the smoking of weed. Right. It's Not probably related to other, maybe other uh, illegal uh, substances, but... Relationship problems, I think that's the core of a lot of it, based I on what I hear right. from I the people. You're right. Gabe, you're wearing a yellow shirt. Oh, Brian Goslow on today's show. <laughs> Gabe... <laughs> This is a star-studded panel today. Oh, it's amazing. Boy. It's amazing. Um, it's not a panel. The people are just kind of wandering through. Star-studded yeah. crowd. Gabe, are you involved in organizing this thing tonight? I was involved in organizing this thing. Yeah. What is it? What? It, who? Who organizes it? This is uh, Worcester Filmworks. And, okay. Uh, it's uh, geez. I, now you got to put me on pressure so I can remember everyone. It's like a ton of people in yellow shirts. It's a ton of people in yellow shirts. Yeah. Um, okay. With immense help from uh, Aaron Williams. Um, of the, geez, Aaron is of the cultural something? Cultural commission. Was that Aaron Williams? Cultural, cultural... We're really sorry, Aaron. <laughs> we don't remember what your job is. I can't hear what you're oh, saying. I'm trying to remember what exactly... I See, I get Aaron confused with the Worcester Arts Council, but I know Aaron's not on the Worcester Arts Council. Aaron Williams. The cultural commission. Yeah, the cultural commission. Cultural commission, yeah. all right. Yeah. So, I think we want to do... We'll see what we'll see what we end up doing here. So this, so this is a Worcester Filmworks is showing a series of films yes, yes. over the summer. Uh huh. Why Back to the Future? Because I got to say we we actually did like we, we actually did like a drive-in at our house last summer, uh -huh. and that was like the first thing on everybody's mind was we're doing Back to the Future. What, why Back to the Future? Yeah. Do you like Back to the Future? I think it's okay. I yeah. just think I just feel like a lot of people are like that's the right movie for the, for the summer. I, I think I think people love this movie. People, old, young, you know, a lot of people like Back to the Future, and that's uh, that's why we picked it. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Gabe, one of the pieces of news this week is that you're not running for city council. No, I'm not. But which is kind of sad because like your logo was so good, it kind of made me realize that like. All the other Worcester election paraphernalia I've ever seen is terrible. So we're not going to get to see the bar continue to be raised. Can you right. chance of you selling it to anybody else? Selling it to anybody selling else? Is there anybody else in the campaign that has a red beard that well, can buy that logo? Jim Kirsten could probably do something with that. That's an idea. He, yeah. could, he, he, he could probably make that logo work. I think he's... Is there anybody else even with facial hair running? To be honest with you, I don't know anybody else who's running, I, other than uh, Jim and um, Steve Buckalter. Right. And the incumbents. I mean, but I, I have yet to actually stumble across any running at large, anyways. I mean, district. Yeah. You know, some of the people in Tim district Bedoin. races. I have no idea who he is. Tim Bedoin doesn't have a beard, though. No, Tim Bedoin doesn't have a beard. All I know about it's Tim Bedoin is that somebody came to our house pimping for him, and like when I when my wife asked, so what does he stand for? The person who came to the door said, well, he stands for the important stuff like arts and culture. And she said, well, but like really, what is it? What, <laughs> is what are his positions on things? And the guy got frustrated and walked away. So. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's Tim, not good. Tim, Tim should step it up a notch when it comes to Probably. the people that he has pimping for him. Probably. So. Yeah. But he's got a lot of lawn, lawn signs out, so apparently that pitch is working on somebody. He's got a ton of lawn signs. Yeah. Him, well, they'll him. all get stolen by August. So. <laughs> I've, seen a, I've seen a couple by other people, but he's like the one with the lawn That's signs the only ones that I've actually seen out for um, at large, uh, in at large scene, anyways. He's doing. Yeah. He's maybe he's pulling a Gary Rosen. He's doing a Gary Rosen. You, he you, could be Gary Rosen. He kind of does look like Gary Rosen. Does he really look like Gary Rosen? A little. A younger Gary Rosen. I could see that. Yeah. So, so actually. You can hear point him out to me. He's going to be down here, right? No. If he's here, I will point him out to you. I haven't seen him yet, though. I, there's a lot of people running for office, many of whom I don't know who they are. There's a yeah. lot of people running for office. None of them are here. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. That's I, I, I don't think so, at least. I don't think so. Right. I talked to you that it's planning on coming down here. That's surprising. But Maybe they're just here for the movie, not for the music. Yeah, yeah could be. The movie doesn't start for a while. So. Well, Gabe, you get to play Gary. You get to pull a Gary Rosen today, because much as Gary, after he got off the council, started speaking extremely straight and repudiated all of the, everything the council ever did basically <laughs> while yep. he was on the council. Now that you're no longer running, we're going to ask you as part of our gen- larger larger discussion here. Okay. Questions about these are the these are the questions. These are the issues. All right. They're on this little paper here. All right. All the issues. All of them. We're all, ask, all eight of them. All of them. Maybe not the six. <laughs> First of all, how much can you bench? How much can I bench? Uh, probably less than my weight, honestly, but I mean... What's your? Ma- do, you, do you know what your lifetime max is? My lifetime max? Jesus. I'm thinking... Uh, Make something up, man. You, you, yeah, 5,000. Five, five I, I actually I'm saw thinking. Gabe lift a, vo- a small Volkswagen <laughs> off of an injured child once. Like It was during a car accident. How small was the Volkswagen? Well, it was That's one of the point. older ones. It was uh, like a Golf, but like not the newer Golfs, the older Golfs. So you can, deadlift, you can deadlift like 1,000 pounds. Pretty much. 2, With a spotter, 2,000. Not the whole thing. I mean, just like the rear axle off the ground. All right. So this, this, this next one, you actually have to give us the honest okay. answer on. Okay. Favorite character on The Wire? 5,000 pounds. All right. <laughs> no, no. Honestly, favorite character on The Wire? Wow. I mean, I'm tempted to say Omar, but I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of an easy answer. I'm going to say The Bunk. The Bunk. Oh, yeah? The Bunk. Do you, do you have a... Because Omar and Bunk are the two most the most ethical people on the entire show. Yeah, I'd Wait. say so. I'd say so. Bunk is not ethical because he does have a line that he won't cross. That's, well, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah, pretty they, far they, along, they, but there's, there's a line. Those, those, are the only, code. those are the only two characters that I'm familiar with in the show that actually drew lines in the sand and stuck to the stand. Everybody else crossed lines over and over again. Those two, never. True. All right. Um, what's your position on school privatization? On school privatization? Well... Education was my absolute weak point. Okay. And it's not it's not something I know a lot about. And now that I have nothing to lose, I could say that my my stand pat answer was going to be, I'll look into it and I will get back to you. Okay. So that was uh <laughs> That can remain your answer. That. Yes. Um Here's the next question. City departments, particularly the police department, have information that can help the public make good decisions about running the city. That information is hard to access. Some would say impossible. What would you do to change that? Um, what what I would do to change that is simply make it more accessible online. I mean, we've got the technology to do something like that. Okay. And, and as far as I know, you know, it's expensive, but it's really not that expensive. So, I think some of it is, some of it, at least, the, the, I think that the perception, at least as far as police records stuff goes, is that it's just like, it's just not what they want to do. They just don't want to make this information available. Yeah, it seems There's that not, way. there's, you know, there's a lot, they have concerns with the ways that it could be used. They have concerns probably that it would somehow weaken them politically. There's concerns that it's just expensive for the police to have to go through records and like redact stuff, so they don't want to be doing it on a regular they basis. They're not actually doing anything. Uh, I, I no, mean, I mean, well, no, but I mean, it might be there might be some issues there. I don't know. I mean, I mean, the the, the way I see it is, uh, you know, how scared? Why are they scared of all this? The first question anybody with a logical mind should ask is, What are you why? afraid of? It's, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Exactly. I mean. Maybe we should ask the city council candidates this to get another a ninth question. Which is odd because politicians tend to be the ones who always ask if you've got nothing to hide, then you know you, you, that sort of thing when it comes to like security Fair cameras and more involvement in your life. But they tend to be the ones who don't want to tell you what they're hiding. <laughs> that's true. That, that's absolutely true. What is local government's role in regulating the day-to-day lives of citizens, and is there a limit? Uh, there's definitely a limit. Um, I'd say I'd say the role. Try to figure out a way to put this. Um, 
I mean, you don't want to infringe on anybody's rights. Uh, okay. Yeah, you absolutely don't want to infringe on anybody's rights. At the same time, as local government, you're sort of defining, you're redefining people's rights as they go on. For example, you know, I don't know, the right to, like, the right to, like, have your pit bull breathe free or whatever. You know what? I, I, this right here is a great example of this, right? Like, if we look right over there where that person in the red shirt is sitting, there's a bunch of graffiti that was just written on the ground there by children with chalk. If you look over there on the other side of the truck, there's a bunch of people on bicycles. All these things are technically illegal in the city of Worcester, right? On the common, especially, there's but, a sign. But hold nothing, on, hold on. there's a sign over there. Okay. The point being that nothing bad is happening, right? I mean, there would be very little reason to come in and round all of these folks up and put them in the who's gal for the night. Like, it's actually people having a nice time. It's a great example of the, the city uh, putting ordinances in place just for the sake of having ordinances, to make it look as though they're doing anything. They're not actually impacting anybody's life with those ordinances. What, what, what I will say is this, that, like, there, there, are, there are some things in the city that should be rapidly enforced. I, I mean, uh, I want to point out that the sun is over there, that we're actually getting this awesome reflection of the sun off of this building. It's adding, like, a natural light. It is. Like, you so look, at, look at the shadows on this man. Anyway. Um, so what I was going to say is uh, people that, that just let their properties go, just go. Yeah. Like, you know, things like that. Things that really do, that are a public nuisance. And, and you can't take care of that stuff, but you're going to tell me you're going to make these sign ordinances and smoking ordinances and, and all these different ordinances that, like uh, like Brendan says, just aren't that big of a deal. Maybe people, maybe we need to be focusing on the fundamentals. Dribbling, shooting, passing. Get those down. Exactly. Work Walking. on those. Yeah. And then worry about all this, like, Harlem Globetrotters stuff. Don't worry about the tobacco ordinances. Man, until you can pass the basketball, right? That's, <laughs> yeah. One step at a time. Um... What's your personal vision for the city? My personal vision for the city is... Um, Every time I move the camera closer, you're trying to get a better shot. You don't have to be a A vibrant, be like a vibrant downtown. All right. I mean, that, that, that's it, a vibrant downtown, um, a green city, um, a, a city that knows how to promote itself, that knows how to let outsiders know what everything the city has to offer. I mean... We've, we've, we've all, three of us have lived there for years. Sure. We know what the city has to offer. Sure. You know, may, maybe somebody that lives uh, 40 miles outside the city, 30 miles outside the city, I don't think that they really know. They don't know. And, uh, we got to do a better job of uh, You know, some, somebody, somebody just introduced me to a, to, a, to a young man who's just moved to the city for grad school stuff. And he asked me, I need to know about bars and coffee shops. I want to tell people at home what I told him. Dive bar, acoustic job, a bean counter. Start there. Anyway. What we're talking about bars? Is that what we're talking about? Bar. If, if, you, had, if, if, place to start. Like if you had a bar and a coffee shop, where do people need to start? Somebody just walked in town, Vincent's. All right. Vincent's always, uh, Ralph's, um, all right. Armsby Abbey. Sure. You know, all those places. Uh, sure. Geez, I mean, uh, lots of good restaurants. What about yeah. the overtime tap? Overtime tap? Overtime tap. Have you been in there yet? Is what it is. I always think it's a strip club because it has a giant X on it. They're actually doing a pretty good job over there. I mean, it, you know, it might, it, for what it is, which is just like a bar that anybody can walk into, yeah. it, you know, sitting on Worcester Common, probably the best incarnation of a bar that anybody can walk into on Worcester Common that we've had to this point. Hey, good job. And friendly staff. Good job. Um, Those people seem to be enjoying themselves. What's your... What's your view on the relationship between the council and the city manager? Um, so, this city's perfect, right? <laughs> well, the city manager is doing a perfect job. Right, we're, and, 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 11, and, and 11 people who can't agree on anything, right? <laughs> right. Can agree that this city that's perfect could not be managed any better. Could not be managed any better whatsoever. Right. A plus plus plus. Yes. Not A++, but A++. Yeah. He could get a higher, I think he could get a higher ranking by a little bit from the council, so, but not by much. So, so in short, my view, my, my opinion of the relationship between the council and the city manager is one of confusion. All right. Fair enough. How should we measure the sustainability of Worcester? How should we measure the sustainability of Worcester? Wow. Again... The, uh, the sustainability issue? I'll get back to you on that also, one. Also one to get back to me on. 
I don't know what the answer to that is. I like that as a question, though. Yeah. This is this is the one feedback we've gotten so far on Google Plus. Not a lot of traffic on Google Plus. to answer, but I don't know if we should give away the answer on. on I think there's only one real answer, but I don't you gotta think we you give gotta away. you gotta you gotta put Worcester in the ring with another city and see who survives. What's up? You got that? That's how you measure the sustainability of the city. Hard time. No, but see, I think that's the whole point, though, is that you can't measure measure yourself when you're talking sustainability. You can't measure yourself against other communities because every other community around the world is going to have a different set of tools to actually work with. The only way to measure sustainability is the amount of input uh, that is uh, taking place, like the the amount uh, of energy that's being ex expelled into the city itself and not being controlled by outside forces. Right. So I mean, okay. working with what we have on hand as opposed to bringing materials, tools in. Right. So I mean, that kind of all we're talking about when we're talking sustainability, right? And it, it, it's a, a big rollback to the idea of like mom and pop brick and mortars and what have you, but also just working with uh, local materials when it comes to building, making sure that we're focusing on local labor, uh, making sure that we're focusing on local brain power to come up and come up with and solve our problems. You know, that's another, you're just talking about the city manager and the city council, right? I mean, like, we don't seem to have any problems in the city when it comes to the city council, but they're always chasing down other people's dreams and ideas, right? Like we look to Boston, Providence, whatever they, for, for, for our next greatest thing. We rarely look internally at ourselves and say, what the hell do we actually need here? Let's forget it for a second what Boston's doing or what Providence is doing. What does the city of Worcester need to do to provide uh, you know, a high quality of life for itself? And I mean, politics can be sustainable as well too. Again, in that, that very realm, not looking far outside, but actually looking within. So turning everything in on it on itself, and when you can measure the amount uh, of, of, of shit being turned in on itself, you, you're starting to increase the level of sustainability in the city. I hope this band is loud enough that I don't have to edit out your swears for television. Uh, there was a, draw, a, a snare right when, right when I said that. Okay. Um, this guy, uh, this guy gives a good answer, huh? I make all of this up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is the Tomorrow sustainability. People will listen to that and say, "What the hell? He didn't say anything." There. I don't know if this is the sustainability question we want to use, but that's what we have right now. People need to help us with this, though. Like, if you got ideas for a sustainability question, because it needs to be something which is a hard question. Like, part of the reason I'm asking these questions, Gabe, I want questions that I don't have to get into, like, a lot of follow-up follow questions, and, like, if somebody decides to dodge the question. Like, I'm looking for questions which are, like, clear, and if somebody dodges the question, it's self-evident they're dodging the question. Yeah. If they don't know, it's self-evident they don't know. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's understandable. This is, this is a good song for Back to the Future. Um, why do you... Is there people serving food, food at Yes. Me? Theater Cafe. Theater Cafe is serving food. Do you think any of it's vegan? There is some vegan. There's uh, there's uh, veggie wraps. Is it cost money? They cost money. Oh, man. All right. they, will, they will cost you money. I might eat at my house, but <laughs> good for them. Um, why do you oppose neighborhood councils? Well, I don't! <laughs> But you may have had you actually been running for office. So I, I would, I absolutely would not have. Do you I, like neighborhood councils? I love the idea of neighborhood councils. I love the idea of there being a set of people that has say in the direction of their neighborhood. That I mean, it, it only it's one of those no-brainers. It makes sense. You know, I was just thinking about the one downside of neighborhood councils would be that, like, I think some of us are excited by it because we haven't seen one in Worcester. And then, like, once we saw one, some people would say, well, you're just going to have ten city councils. You're going to be, you're going to have ten times as many people that you're angry at and ten times as many people who are causing problems. On the other hand, for people who are excited about city politics, there'll be ten times more crazy stuff to be interested in. Yeah. I'd like I to mean, just point out another obvious code violation taking place. There's a group sitting over there that has an open flame. But whatever they're doing with it, it's totally awesome. They have an open I think they're playing, like, cards or something, but they actually, there's an open flame on a table. They actually brought their own table. I don't even know, are tables, are your own tables allowed down here? You, you have, have to use, a permit for tables. You have to have a permit to bring yeah. your own table. <laughs> they have at least 15 code violations going, in, in red solo cups. This is great. I think they're playing asshole with an open flame on their own table. That's, but they're having their smiles on their faces too. That's at least another 15 code violations for each smile. That's fantastic. Sorry. Wonderful. All right, so. Where should the city draw the line in taking responsibility for development? Where should the city draw the line when selling off existing assets? How should the city be making its money? What's the correct tax rate for Worcester homeowners? One word answer. That's question oh, seven. What was right, the first one again? <laughs> <laughs> well, where should the city draw the line in taking responsibility for development? Um, that's I think I think they should definitely put stuff out there to be marketed for development. Okay. As far as what? As far as like how they're completely involved with City Square, things yeah. like that. Yeah, no. You think it should more hands <laughs> off. 
Yeah. More market-based solutions. Um, did, did anybody paying attention see how quick that Shaw's came down? The Shaw's on Grafton Street. Oh yeah, yeah. Much it's already quicker down. Than it went up. Much quicker. <laughs> I mean, I mean... It was actually the only thing... It may have been open slightly longer than the time it took to knock it down. But yeah, only by a couple minutes. Only by so. a couple minutes. Yeah. But point being is that you've, you've got a 100% private thing going on over there. And that Shaw is just boom, right down. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, what... I mean, granted, this is going semi-quick now. Right. But how long did it take to even start knock, knocking this down? Knocking it took a long time. Down? I mean... It took a long time. Yeah. I tell you, I don't necessarily... I'm not like some sort of, I guess I'm some sort of anti-government person in a, in a sort of general sense of feeling like government is basically evil. Yeah. But as far as like practical day-to-day, -day, should government be involved with this stuff? I tend to be pretty open-minded. But I feel like the city government of Worcester hasn't shown me that it has a great track record of really shepherding this stuff through. It doesn't completely screw stuff up, but it also, there's a ton of problems along the way. It seems like it's the kind of thing where, again, like dribble the ball, shoot the ball, pass yeah. the ball. Yes. And then worry about, you know, City Square once you, like, there's, got all that going. There's well. a lot of cart before the horse. There's a lot of it. I love the metaphors we have on this show. <laughs> Somebody uh, actually put the horse inside the cart and expected it to move on its own. That's... Uh, the second part of that is, where should the city draw the line when selling off existing assets? Like, as in the auditorium and the courthouse and... and I don't know. Brandon came up with that question. Things, things yeah, such I mean, as this. DCU Center, I mean, whatever. The, the things that, I mean, that's now privately managed, but it's still, I, I think, technically owned by the city, the, the structure itself. Or... Well, again, I guess you got to do what's what's right for the company. I mean, something like the odd, as you and I have actually talked about, you're you're never, you're just never building a building like that ever again. Right. Like, that, that building is not going to be rebuilt. And you need to do, before you just sell it to somebody, sell the property to somebody who's going to tear that building down, you got to explore every single avenue with a building like that. Because, because it's architecturally such a treasure. Yeah, it'd be, it, it would be insane to lose that building. Yeah. Um, you know, things that may not be as architecturally significant or, or something like that, I mean, you know, I mean, you can't save every single building. Right. You know? Um, how should the city be making its money? By enforcing these ordinances? Really? I, 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 I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even kidding you. Like, um, you know, specifically the public nuisance stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it just it baffles me. What how do you mean it, by public nuisance? Like drunkenness or like people's trash in people's yards? Trash in their yards. I mean, just houses, dilapidated houses falling apart. It, it, you know, absentee landlords, things like that. I mean, there, 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 there is code. And it does need to be enforced. Okay. What's the correct tax rate for Worcester's homeowners? Not the lowest. Not the lowest. No. Do you think that they should that, that they they should shoulder more and maybe business less? Yes. Or actually, maybe they both should shoulder more. I think that they well, no, I think that they should shoulder less. I mean, shoulder more, and business should shoulder less because in the long run, in the in the long run, if they keep voting for the lowest residential tax rate. They're, they might have the lowest in Worcester, but they're going to have the highest around. Yeah. Because at know? some point you're not going to have, you're not going to, I don't know, you know, unless the business thing is continually growing, you're not really going to keep being able to... Exactly, exactly. I mean, you're, you're going to end up paying for the majority of, uh, of city expenses, you know, and that's what commerce is for. What boards and commissions have you served on? I have not. But you're you're thinking about him. Yeah, I applied. Uh, you don't have to say I what you're applied to a couple. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good deal. I'm, I'm very excited about this. You know, Nicole Apostola, of the, all the yes. crazy things she's obsessed by in this world, the one thing she's convinced me of, not that Mike Germain is exciting or anything, it's that people should definitely people who are people who are like have energy around being civically engaged should be civically engaged, and one great route is to get onto a board or a commission. I want to ask all the candidates this, all the challengers. What have you been on, and if you haven't been on anything, you know, what's been keeping you? I know it's hard to get on some of them, but still, it's like... The only thing that should keep anybody from being on them is the fact, the, the absurdity that so many of them are meet during the day. Right? I mean, it's actually hard for somebody who's, you know, employed 
uh, to sit on a lot of these boards. Yeah, they, sure, they, yeah. They more cater to the uh, self-employed lawyers and business people who tend to meander on, on to, into local government anyways. This is a valid answer. I still want to ask people, though. Oh, I'd never I, have been I, I on a board sure. or a commission, because again, I because I have a certain hostility towards the government in my heart, and also because I feel like, I don't know, I mean, I, I do... I must destroy it from within, Michael. We do, we also, we do a public affairs show. I feel like this is my two cents, you know. I don't the know. only board, the only commission that I sat on met, met at night. You know, I mean, it was, I, but not all of them do. I mean, and, and it seems as though some of the more important ones tend to meet during the day, which is very problematic. Right? I mean, it's a tricky thing for citizens. Very tricky. Cool. Well, is there anything else that we need to that you could show us around here? We got about five minutes left. We could just wrap up the show now. I mean, uh, just did you get a good shot of the whole? Uh, let's go. Let's go get a good shot. Where's the right vantage point? Oh, you have something on your back. Well, thanks to Gabriel and for being on the show. Thanks to Worcester Filmworks for putting this together. Thanks to Aaron Williams for the great job you do at whatever your job is. That's actually Aaron Williams singing right now. And thanks to these guys for providing fine music. Thanks to the people of Worcester for violating the law and having fun on the common. This is 508. We'll see you next week. <laughs>